tell it's one of them slow Sunday evenings where everybody's ready to take a nap. Amen. So uh, I, I'm, the challenge is on for me tonight. So you all just help us. But I, I would like to, uh, I don't want to bore you with this, um, but we seem like we took a detour the last four or five weeks off of Revelation. And, uh, well, I just felt the, the, the need and do. I don't want to be stuck on something where the Lord can't lead you something different, you know. But I, I still feel like Jesus is coming and um, believe it soon. We're, we're definitely in the, the, the time of the Lord spoke about and, and uh, signs are all around us. So let's start reading. Revelation chapter 2. This is the fourth church, the church of Thyatira. Very interesting you know, subject tonight, and I want to need your help. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 18. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Notice what he says. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. I'll tell you, to me, verse 21 is a, uh, really is an unbelievable verse to be in there after you read verse 19 of the wickedness of this lady in this church. And most commentators state and believe that this was an actual lady in this church causing church trouble. Now, I will say this. Ralph Cox said, I didn't say this. I've only pastored uh, three or four churches and uh, not seasoned as Brother Cox nor as, nor as old, not yet anyhow. And, uh, and Brother Cox said of all of his years, he personally has known and seen more church trouble by women than anybody else. Sorry, sisters, I'm not, I'm not down on the ladies tonight, so don't, don't get a hurt at me, okay? But I have heard Brother Cox say that. I know it's a little humorous, but very seriously, he said it very serious. And, uh, you know, you think of the church of Fowler Tower as just some wicked, vile, bad church, but I want you to get right off, right off the first. As soon as we read this, that's, that's not this church. This church ain't the big, bad, wolf church. Uh, matter of fact, if you read verse 19, uh, we already have. He, he, there are several things that he compliments them about in this church. And the big thing that he is against is that they've allowed this woman, who the Bible calls Jezebel here, to teach and seduce. And he said, I gave her space to repent and of her fornication, and she repented not. I'll tell you what I'd do if I was God. I'd just kill him. I'd just wipe him out. If he did that, for everybody that made a mistake, for everybody that strayed off a little bit, huh? Probably none of us would be here. Amen. And, uh, you know, and I've, I've heard it said, I don't want to take a big long rabbit trail here, but well, why didn't God just jerk the cover out of them? And why didn't God just expose them? And why didn't God do this? And, you know, and some kind of uh, something. You know, God's merciful. I mean, you read verse 20. And he is leading God's, she is leading God's people astray. And then the very next verse says, God gave her space, which represents time. God gave her time to repent. I mean, you would think, Brother Russell, that God would just whoosh, you know, and, and slay her and, and just take her life. But that's not what happened. Matter of fact, he was upset with this church. His, uh, uh, condemnation of this church was the three words, because thou sufferest. Thank you, Brother Earl. You allowed this woman 
to cause you church trouble. You didn't put her in her place. You didn't tell her to shut up. And that's plain Kentucky talk, but you get it. Amen. Verse 22, he said, Behold, I will cast her into a bed. And them that commit adultery with her and a great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Now, and I, I, I'm not going to have the time, and I don't have the ability to tell you all of what verse 22 means. There's just no way possible. But if you believe, I personally do believe in the dispensational uh, truths uh, where these seven churches can and probably do. I don't want to say for sure. I'm not God, but most Bible scholars, most holiness people believe in the dispensations of time and church periods. And each church here represents a, a church age. And most writers say that this church of Thyatira is representing the Roman Catholicism church age for around 15, 1600 years where, where Rome, of course, allowed and lifted up the mother of Christ, which was Mary, more than Christ. Amen? And so that's, I'll deal with that maybe a little bit later, but let's move on. He said, here, here is the punishment in verse 23, And I will kill her children with death. Here's a troublemaker in the church. And of course, I believe it's a real troublemaker, a real lady. All the commentators that I read, none of them said that they didn't think this was not a real... Every one of them said uh, that they felt like this was a real lady in this local assembly that was causing trouble. And I'm going to tell you something. And then he says, if she doesn't repent and those that follow her don't repent, he said, I'll kill, I will kill her children. Wow. Now, I'm going to take my time. I'm not here to make you shout tonight. I'm going to try to preach to you. Uh, you know, I, I thought, I try to think of... Um, and I haven't gotten done reading here. I, ha I try to think of churches and me, me being a young man still yet. And um, and my wife doesn't say that. She says I'm an older man, but I feel like I'm still a young man myself. And uh, But in, in knowing churches and, and that's had church trouble and and situations, I can think of several right off the bat. I might deal with some of them a little later in the message. And, and you know, the sad thing about it, when I think of those type of people, I don't see their children falling in behind them in that local assembly, in that local church. I see their children going through some terrible situations in life. I'll tell you something. It's rough to be a church troublemaker. Hello. Amen. It's rough being a church. I'd hate to, I'd hate to be known, and I have heard. People tell me, that lady right there has caused trouble ever since she's been here. Hello. I've heard that about every church I've pastored. And I've heard other pastors tell me, that lady right there, that lady right there, I'm telling you, I've been here for 27 years and she's caused trouble ever since I've been here. Huh? I told you about, well, I started to call that pastor's name, but I better not because that church is still going on. But I told you about that one pastor who had a church troublemaker, and it was a woman, bless her heart, and who had called the pastor and left message after message after message after message on the voicemail. Anybody remember me telling that? About hoping the pastor's wife would die and hope she'd break her leg and hope she'd be paralyzed. And seriously, I mean, they even went to uh, the law enforcement and because there were some threats and all kinds of... And I'm talking about a lady with a bun on her head who was doing the threatening, Sister Jewel. I'm talking about a lady that had long sleeves on, a long dress, you know, just neckline up to here. And, but, man, she was mean than a rattlesnake. Amen. It doesn't matter if it, if, you, if it ain't right in here, it ain't right. I mean, you can wear it down to your toenails where you can't even see your toes. But if it ain't right in here, you ain't right. You ain't going. It ain't, it, it, just because you look modest, that ain't a free ticket to heaven. Amen. All right. That ain't my... Scoop, but it was a good rabbit trail right there. But notice, I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. And he said, But, on, but unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyroid Tower, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan. And notice what Jesus compares 
Jezebel's doctrine, too, is the depths of Satan. You get one, you know, have you ever heard that? You get one bad apple in the whole bushel will go bad unless you get that bad apple bad out. This church didn't want to get the bad apple out. They just loved everybody. Huh? So, you know, you, you, you know, so let me share something with you right here at the start. You can't run a church where you just want to, you don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. There's no way a pastor or a deacon board or a church that's true, genuine, can run a church with the, with the thought of we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Well, of course we don't intentionally, but if somebody's going to cause trouble, if they bold enough to stand up or say something that's going to get out of line, that's going to, you know, you know, who was it? Nip it in the bud. I think that was Barney, wasn't it? Bunch of carnal people here. We, of course, I'm the one who first said it. But nip it in the bud. You gotta stop it before it ever gets started. Now, I know we're laughing about that, but it's easier said than actually go nip something in the bud. When you say, hey, I'd like to talk to you. I heard some stuff. And if you're doing this, I, I want you to stop or else. Huh? So you see where I'm going with this. All right. Amen. So let's just, let's just read on real quick. So he's talking about the depths of Satan, which Christ is referring back to the doctrine that this woman is teaching, that they're allowing, uh, you know, to lead his, God's people astray. But he said to those that aren't, aren't following this, he said, I'll put upon you none other burden. I'm not going to kill your children. I'm going to bless you. I'm talking about those that are following her and, 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 and instigating her doctrine. But you that stand true, I will put this upon you. Listen to what he says. But that which you have already uh, hold fast till I come, and he that overcome and keeping my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations." And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter. Shall they be broken to, to shivers even as I received of my father? And I will give him the morning star. And he that hath in here, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Would you help me pray? Father, I have a great task in front of me here. I need your help. Lord, we, we've been out of, took a detour here off of Revelation. I know all of our minds now are on victory and shouting and running and all of that. But Lord, help us to, to come back and finish up, Lord, what we felt like you dealt with us about on this book of Revelation because you said in your word that it's a blessing, that we would receive a blessing. We believe your words. So give me clarity of thought and clarity of speech and help me to say tonight exactly what the Holy Ghost would have me to say. Nothing more, nothing less. In Christ's name we pray. Everybody says amen. All right, let's preach a little while if the Lord would help us on, on the church of Thyatira. Amen. The city of Thyatira, in, in these letters, in these seven letters to these seven churches, received the longest letter. It was uh, Lydia. Uh, remember in the book of Acts, chapter 16, the seller of purple, that she was from the city of Thyatira, who had came to uh, Philippi in Macedonia on business, and she heard Paul preach the gospel there. And the Bible said in Acts 16, and verse 14, received the truth. And uh, nowhere is it ex stated exactly how this assembly, though, uh, in Thyatira got started. Some say that it's not unlikely that Lydia returned back to her home and witnessed to her faith uh, in Jesus Christ. Luke tells us that she was baptized also in Acts 16, 15. And the Bible goes on to say that even her whole family was baptized. Amen. We don't know, however, though, uh, if she started this church, but a lot of commentators, about every commentator said uh, from Scripture, amen, it looks like and could easily be this lady that went back to Thyatira and told about her faith and her family got saved. And, of course, thus was a church formed in this city of Thyatira. Now, when you read this, when you read verse 18, God himself, Christ, uh, gives himself as the the author of this letter. Notice he says in verse uh, 18, These things saith what the Son of God. Amen. 
There is a reason for this phrase. If you notice each letter, if you do remember, and I'm sure you probably don't, but let me rehearse real quick. Each letter opens up with a description of Christ. Amen. This description here, he describes himself as, uh, uh, these things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Notice he says, the Son of God. Uh, when you think of this, conditions in the church of Thyatira were prophetic of the next period in church history. Now, I don't mention this about church time periods, and each church could represent and is a type and shadow. And from the 7th to the 16th centuries, during that time, from A.D. 600 to A.D. 1500, the world saw the rapid rise of Romanism, the Catholic Church, Catholicism, to this church, which was prophetic of that long, dark period, and we know it in history as the Dark Ages, when the papacy uh, uh, wielded her power, and Christ declares himself here to be the Son of God. One writer said it like this. He said, as the Son of God, he rebukes the church that would degrade him and keep him the son of a human mother while exalting her above him as the mother of God and the queen of heaven. Ain't that what the church of Rome has done? Amen. He would have all men know that they are not dealing with prophets like Moses and Elijah, nor with apostles like Paul and Peter. They are dealing with deity, with the divine Son of God. Amen. Himself. The rise of Romanism made Jesus popular. Amen. Not as the Son of God, but as the Son of Mary. A position that robes him of his essential, robs him rather of his essential deity and thereby degrades him. But God had a son co-eternal, co-equal with the father. While it is truly prophesied that a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, it is equally true that the son was given before he was ever born of Mary. I want to talk to us a little bit about this church in Thyatira. He further goes on to describe himself as who hath eyes like unto a flame of fire. Now, you've got to get this. Help me here, Lord. One writer said a hundred years past said it like this. He said, there is nothing more piercing than flame and fire. Everything yields and melts before it. It penetrates all things, consumes every opposition, sweeps down all obstructions and presses its way with invincible power. And of this sort are the eyes of of G. You ain't going to get by with it. You can't hide from God. Amen. He has eyes like a fame of fire, 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 fire. You all know what fire is. Amen. Phew, it's going to be one of those nights. I can not feel it. They look through everything. They pierce through all masks and coverings. They search the remotest recesses. They behold the most hidden things of the soul, and there is no escape from those eyes. As a son of God, he is omnipotent omniscient as well as almighty. Remember Hagar in the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 16, verses 13, out there all alone in her sorrow and loneliness, she cries out, Thou, God, seest me. Remember that? Amen. Jeremiah testified of him who tried the mind and the heart of all men. The apostles recognized that his eyes like unto a flame of fire pierced human hearts and minds when they prayed, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men. I like this. The word knowest, amen, is a word that's translated from the Greek, which means heart knower. Amen. Heart knower. The divine heart knower pierced the Pharisees with his omnipotent gaze when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of the hearts. He knew their hearts were hard. He knew all men. He knew what was in man. Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him, he said. He read the hearts of Nathaniel. Remember that? Amen. The woman of Samaria at the well that Brother Heath preached on the other night. He read the heart of Simon Peter. Never, Simon Peter never could erase when Jesus looked at him after he had betrayed. Christ did not utter any words, but he just looked at Peter and it touched the heart of Peter. Jesus didn't look with him with a, with a look of condemnation and a, uh, but a heart full of love and compassion and it touched the heart of Simon Peter. The Bible said here his feet are like brass. Brass in the Bible is always, amen, a sign of judgment. Are you with me? 
He treadeth the winepress. The Bible said in Revelation 19, 15, he, he, he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. Brass is a metal used in Scripture as a symbol of judgment. So he's telling, he is starting this letter out. He meant, thus saith the Son of God, whose eyes are like a flame of fire and whose feet are like brass. Amen. I mean, he is coming to them, amen, telling them that he is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-seeing, and he is a God that will judge sin. Amen. I want to tell you something. Sin must be judged. If the guilty in Thyatira or America or Asia or Africa or Europe or any other place will not repent and come to Christ as the Savior and Lord, then they must face Him when He comes again to judge the living in the dead. I want to talk to us now about verse 19. I spoke to you a little bit earlier, real quick. Help me, Holy Ghost. How that I don't want you to get a. Uh, necessarily a bad picture of this church because if you got a thompson train reference bible over on the right side in the margin on verse 18 it says the church of the false prophetess amen but before you get down to where she's at the bible describes uh, an approval that just almost paramounts all the other churches combined i mean when he talks about their words matter of fact it's one of the few all of the four churches that we're dealing with thus far, he mentions that he knows their works actually uh, twice. Amen. He mentions the other churches once, but this particular church, he said, I know thy works. Amen. I know thy works. He deals with their charity. Notice what he says, and charity in verse number 19. Amen. The Christ of the lampstands credits this church with charity. So it's not a bad church, huh? It is a church that has charity or love, if you will, with all the faultiness in this church. As we'll see a little later, there was much good love led the list of virtues where love was, amen, waning in the church of Ephesus, in the church of Thyatira, it was gaining love. Amen, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 said, was the first, amen, characteristic of a Christian is love. I'll tell you what, if you don't have love, amen, the love of God in your heart, you are not a Christian. I don't care what you look like, how much you pray, amen, you can you can sell everything you have, distribute it to the poor, and the Bible said if you have not charity, amen, you don't have anything. Your religion, your salvation is useless. Amen. Galatians chapter 5 talks about the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. The first manifestation, amen, is the fruit of the ninefold fruit of the Spirit is charity. Notice what he said. He said, I know thy works in charity and service. Church was full of ministry. I don't have time to go through all of them, amen, in detail. But the saints at Thyatira, like those in Thessalonica, amen, possess the desirable combination, amen, that scripture that talks about that labor of love, that was this church. It was a church that he said, I know thy charity, I know the, uh, thy charity and service and faith, amen. The word faith here in the Greek is a word that means faithfulness or fidelity or loyalty. Everybody wasn't accepting Jezebel's doctrine. Huh? Everybody wasn't going with her, with her evil, seductive, uh, uh, easy preaching, uh, theology. There was a few folks in this church, amen, that was following, amen, Christ wholeheartedly and faithful and loyal. The next thing you see this church has is patience. Amen. Patience. As service grows out of love, patience is the sequence of faith. These saints had patience. He said, I know thy works, and the last to be more than the first. What was that saying? He says, uh, amen. In other words, you're, you're doing more, amen, now than when you first started. I was reading a commentator today that said, uh, one, one pastor said it like this. He said, how many times have I seen church folks rise up, amen, with the enthusiasm to start something and then just, just uh, two or three months go down or a year go by, it sort of dwindling down to nothing. But he says of this church, I know your works in the last. It's more than the first. You're doing more now for the cries of Christ than even when you first started. I want you to see he is just magnifying and complimenting them and commending 
commended them for being such a great church. But then he comes down in verse 20, amen, and then he begins to admonish them, amen, about them suffering this woman called Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, because thou sufferest or allowest, amen, this woman, Jezebel, amen. Now, I want you to, you know, Jezebel has to be probably the meanest woman in the Bible. Huh? Jezebel would probably have to be the most meanest woman of the Bible. Of course, in the holiness church, it's sort of, uh, uh, you know, the only thing we know about Jezebel, she painted her face. Amen. But I'll tell you what, she did a lot more than that. That was just, that was just only, uh, only a little, uh, little taste of her wickedness and her vileness. I mean, when you, when you look at the Old Testament Jezebel, which married King Ahab, amen, and turned the people of God away from God. Man, I sure wouldn't want to be married to a lady named Jezebel. Or a lady who had the spirit of Jezebel. Who was Jezebel? Her very name has come to be associated with evil. The Old Testament Jezebel was the notorious daughter of Ethbal. Amen. Wow, what a name, Ethbal. The pagan king of the Zidians, his subjects in Tyre and Sidon were Baal worshippers. Jezebel married Israel's, I'm talking about in the Old Testament now, uh, married Israel's wicked king Ahab, after which she set up the worship of Baal and Israel. She set up the worship of Baal. I'll tell you something. Now, uh, I don't want to get controversial here and all that good stuff. But boy, when you allow the women of the church. Thank you, Brother James. And we don't have anybody here like that. I don't know of anybody, so I'm not trying to shoot anybody. Amen. Because it is not God's divine order. Amen. Not that I'm not degrading women, but it's not God's divine order. But anyways, I can think back home, back home where nobody knows nobody here. Amen. Some churches that, that women, uh, was pastor or ran. I, and so when you think of Jezebel, when God raised up his prophet Elijah, even in the Old Testament and sent him to rebuke Ahab, it was Jezebel who rose up and threatened Elijah and frightened him so badly that he fled for his life and was ready to resign from the ministry because one woman you ever, y'all know L.D. Moore? L.D. Moore said, you resign that church, son, because that 97-year-old woman, amen, caused you some trouble? Y'all just got no L.D. He said, I just felt like resigning that church because that little skinny woman didn't weigh 100 pounds soaking wet, amen, but she'd get to starting and, and he'd just make you want to resign and run off and hide somewhere. I tell you, though, you can get some woman starting a church, amen, and just, and destroy it. Hello. Let's preach a while here, Amen. I mean, I mean, when, when, I, seriously. I know I'm trying to make it a little humorous where it won't just hurt so bad. Amen. But God help the person that wants to be the troublemaker. Do you remember the other night when Brother Heath gave the altar call and he asked for the hands of troublemakers and it was hands went up? And I sure don't want to cross a boundary of somebody being honest with God. And I would never tell a so, and I haven't. But hands went, and I'm think, which I'm glad for that, somebody being honest. But I'll tell you, when you think of a church troublemaker, I can't help to think, I know somehow we think this doesn't relate to this church right here, but it is. This woman, of course, she was a prophet, as she claimed, and she taught and preached a little bit. But I'll tell you, you might not take the pulpit and get a microphone and get the Bible and preach, but you can get on the telephone. And tell everybody your little pet peeve and get four or five on your side. Make the church service hard for about six months. Huh? I'll tell you something. You look at a church troublemaker. Now I've only been here about three years. You look at the person that, you look at that person that's caused church trouble. Where are their children at? Is her children sitting here tonight? Or are they somewhere else? I mean, the people that caused Brother Willie Ray trouble, the people that caused Steve trouble, the people that caused Shannon, where are they at? I'll tell you something, there is a curse to the person that wants to cause church trouble. 
And you know what the sad thing about it? Some people have done it so long, they think it's normal to roll their eyes and throw their little head back and do their little thing back in the foyer and get three or four ladies and just tell their discontent. You're ignorant if you do that of the Scripture. Because there is a curse that comes along with being a church troublemaker. Hello. Amen. Amen. That's right. Well, I just, I just, I just. I had one pastor recently tell me about Simpson. He said, uh, he said, I just couldn't handle it. He said, uh, he said, I had a lady in my church that kept a notebook and was writing down every single thing that, that I said or done that she thought was toward this one or toward that one or whatever, you know. And I'm thinking, what kind of lady, listen to me, what kind of lady would sit with a notebook in her, in her purse and want to write down every time something don't go just like she wants it to go? You know the devil's going to use that. The devil's going to use that on you. What's happening? What did I say, S- Sister Ficker? You write down all my mistakes. <laughs> I don't think it's Sister Ficker. I don't think I'm preaching to anybody here. I'm just preaching. It's called preventive maintenance. Okay, man. I don't have nobody in my mind. If you do that, I do not know about it. Whew. Amen. I don't want to happen. I don't know if she's laughing. Amen. I probably said something wrong, knowing me. Amen. Well, all right. Where did I get off on church troublemakers? Jezebel. When you when you think of when you think of church trouble and you think of Jezebel in the Old Testament, seriously, let's get back serious here. When you when you think of Jezebel, uh, did you know Jezebel is associated with sodomy? Yes. Yeah, that's in the scripture. And and, and uh let me read it here or find it second Kings chapter twenty three and verse seven. Amen. It talks about the houses of sodomy. Look it up. I mean, she is associated to allowing and, 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 and seducing the people of God. Houses of sodomy. You understand what that is? I don't have to get plainer with that, do I? Huh? Houses where hundreds of sodomites come together. She was associated with that. The priests of Baal were, were wicked, sensual, Perverts, and I know that's strong terms, but you get the picture. And I'm telling you, though, but we're in a society. What do you think the Catholic Church has been in the news about the last three or four or five years? Huh? Amen. When you look at church history, amen, it, it church, when this, when you read this church of Thyatira, and it represents that Catholic, the, the, that time of the dark ages. Amen. And, and, and I remember hearing Charles Barnett, Brother Charles Barnett, how many knows Brother Barnett? He's an elder man, 70 some godly, one of the most prayingest pastors I ever preached for. I preached some revival. If he didn't pray three, four hours a day, he didn't pray none. I mean, he stayed at that church. Every time I walked over there, that man, 70 year old, was on his knees praying. I mean, he prayed hours and hours. Brother Charles Barnett said in his early ministry, God showed him that before any of the news come out in the last five or ten years, amen, that the Catholic Church was full of homosexuals. Of course, everybody thought that, and you know, and, but he said God showed him that they were molesting children, and he had preached about it, and he's got it on tape. I've heard him say, he said, I've got tape after tapes of where I've told that God showed me. Then, of course, a few years ago, it done what? It done come all out. Amen. And just, just in the last month, I've got a uh, thing in the mail from uh, Chick Tracks that the church uses sometimes. They have a little pamphlet in there. And uh, here on the front page of this pamphlet, priest, sex abuse scandal spreading not only in America but over into Europe now. Can you imagine the, 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 the scandalisms, amen, of, of such an ungodly uh, denomination? That is not a, the Catholic is not a church. They might call themselves a church, but it is one of the most hellish you're talking about the depths of Satan. I don't have time uh, to get into all their teachings and the things that they teach. Amen. But I'll tell you something. The Catholic Church is not a church. It, they're, they're nothing like this. Amen. Their teachings, their beliefs are totally opposite against the Bible. Amen. 110%. We are, I am against the Catholic Church. 
Hello. Amen. I'll tell you something. All you got to do is look at the uh, newspapers in the last few years and see the scandals. They knew it all along. They had like they didn't know it. They knew their priest was filthy and vile. Amen. But they was raking in the millions and the billions of dollars and they're covering their sin. Amen. God help the church. Well, oof. Amen. I, I, I hate sin. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't give you a nickel for a preacher who didn't denounce sin. Amen. You can't go out and drink on Saturday night and show up on uh, mass on Sunday morning. It don't work. You're just as lost as lost can be. Thank you, Brother Russell. That's exactly right. Jezebel, this 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 woman of the old temple associated with sodomy. The priests of Baal were uh, just wicked uh, sodomites. And, and this woman of Thyatira in this had influenced God's servants in the revelation here. Christ called her Jezebel. Amen. It could have been a real name. Some say it was. Some say it wasn't. Amen. But more than a uh, identification of her name, it was given a description of the spirit of this lady in this church. Huh? Amen. She she was seductive and wicked, influenced among God's people. I'll tell you something. You You can get one lady in a church with some influence, and she can put a damper on that church. Huh? You, you, you know, I've seen, I don't have time to get into it. I've seen churches crippled. Amen. By, 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 by churches where, where uh, some woman, amen, just in control of everything and it just cripples the entire church. And all you can do is just weep and cry and feel sorry for it. But somewhere along the line, I wasn't there. Amen. I don't know the entire story, but it sounds like, and according to the scripture here, that probably most of those churches, there was probably some good people in that church when it first started. And somebody didn't say, be still, hush up. We're going to, amen, uh, denounce you. We're going to have some church discipline. You're not going to be allowed to vote. You're not going to have a voice in this church. Amen. But through love and through compassion, they thought, and they just tolerated. That's what the problem was with this church. They tolerated this woman to teach and to preach, amen, and to seduce God's people. I tell you what we need. We need some good old-fashioned church discipline. Huh? We don't like that. We don't like that word. Nobody likes discipline. And I don't want to say that boastfully or arrogantly. I don't want to come across like that. Amen. But this church was so sweet. They were so pleasant in their, their church that they tolerated even Jezebel. Amen. Have you ever heard of a lady named Mary Baker Eddy? Huh? What was she the founder of? Helen G. White, founder of the Christian science religion. People that say they have got dreams and visions. You've heard of people like Joseph Smith. Of course, he's not a woman, but you get the picture. Thank you, Brother Earl. That's exactly right. Earl said he's, he's a womanizer. Amen. I'll tell you something. When any man stands up or woman stands up and say, God showed me. And lead you off into something contrary to this King James Version Bible. You need to shun that like the plague. Huh? You need to run from that. Don't go around that. Don't tolerate that. If I ever step behind this pulpit and tell you something contrary to that Bible, you deacons need to meet me right after service. And don't wait three weeks. Don't wait two weeks. Say, hey, listen, son. Uh, this right here, you was out of the book right here. Huh? Is that right? Amy, I mean, don't tolerate it an inch. Amen. You let somebody get up and teach or preach or testify. I mean, you know, sometimes you have to deal with things. It's not easy. I'm talking about stuff that as a pastor, it's not easy. Church discipline. Now, that's not the fun part of being a pastor. When you have to go to somebody and say, no, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. No, you're going to stop that or we're going to have to do this. That's not the easy part. That's the part I don't like about pastoring, but I've had to do it. I've had to do it. I had to do it this past week. I don't like doing that. That's not my favorite part of pastoring. But I'll tell you something. As a pastor, boy, when I see trouble, I want to nip it in the bud. 
I want to just stop it before it ever gets started. Yes, somebody might get mad. Yes, somebody might live. Yes, somebody might, you know, they might rise up. But if I come to them in the spirit of love, tell them how much I love them, tell how much I care about them, amen. But no, we can't allow this, amen, with every ounce of love, with every ounce of, amen, and they turn, amen, God gave them space to repent. I, I, you know, you have mercy and you have mercy, but there does come a time where you got to say, no, it's stopping right here. We can't allow this to go on any longer. That's how, you know how church always has trouble, 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 year after year after year after year after year after year after year, year, have trouble, 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 every month, trouble, trouble. You know how it is when nobody don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. You can't do that. You got to pastor the truth. I heard Brother Southern say, he said, when I stand behind his pulpit, he said, I don't have a wife. I don't have children. I don't have a mama. I don't have a daddy. I don't have any kin folk. I'm preaching thus saith the word of God. Don't be a church troublemaker. Please. Don't be a church troublemaker. Hello? Don't do that. Please don't do that. Because that woman pastor told about, and I'm not saying she was a church troublemaker, but just just out of, just none of her children were saved. I can think of another church that was controlled by a woman and none of her children were saved. They've had so many splits there, it ain't funny. Just, I'll tell you, you get a church. You, you you don't think it. How many churches do you know where you get two or three women, and I'm just going to tear this on out here, I guess, uh, get in control, and a church can have, I mean, and, and this church has got an awesome record. I, I compliment Summit. I mean, to have four pastors in, what, 30 years, you know, is just unbelievable to have four pastors in 30, 30 years or 20 some, however you want to count it. Uh, you know, but to look, but to, but then there is those churches. You know, churches, and I know churches. I know churches in different states. I know churches in Alabama. I know churches, and you know churches where you where, where there is that controlling element. Uh, uh, maybe a one woman, maybe two women, maybe whatever little clad or little click going on, and they've had so many pastors. It ain't funny. Huh? You almost look at it and say, wonder why that old church don't grow. Wonder why their children don't get saved. Wonder why it's just always, why don't they seem like, and you almost, you feel sorry for them. But if you could see spiritually, if you could see behind the scenes, uh, it would be a time that says, hey, God said, I gave them space to repent. They don't want to repent. They want to run the show. Amen. They don't want to turn loose of the power that they've got. Amen. Give it to that pastor. Amen. I'll tell you what I'll do. Amen. I'll kill their children. I'll stop the growth. Amen. It won't grow. Oh, it is struggle. Amen. Am I making any sense? This thirst of child, that church of Thyra Tower, that was their sin. That was their wrong. Was he said, Thou sufferest that woman. Thou sufferest that woman. Jezebel refuses to p- repent, therefore is judged. And I'll tell you this, Jezebel. Harlot Church, the Catholic Church, will soon be judged too. It already is, but I mean, it will be greatly judged in the tribulation period. Hello. One of the last acts of the Old Testament Jezebel was to paint her face in an attempt to conceal her identity, but she died a horrible death. Nevertheless, Rome has been pretending for centuries to be something other than what she is, but the Lord knows her and will finally judge her. Huh? Amen. God help us. Come to the piano. I hope I'm closing. The appeal of this church of Thyra Tower was hold fast till I come. I mean, it might seem like a small thing where it says in verse 25, hold fast till I come. But in the midst of infidelity, in the means of, it means much to him when everybody around us seemingly is going after that false church. And Brother Heath preached on that so wonderful, so eloquent the other night. Those two churches, you remember that? The false church and the true church. There is a false church, saints. There is a church that that is not right with God. Where the preacher does not preach against sin. 
Can I tell you, God still hates divorce. Can I tell you, God still, it is still an abomination. Homosexuality, sodomy is still an abomination to the Lord. Huh? It is still unlawful for you to take your brother's wife. You won't hear that in the other churches. And you sure won't see it disciplined. But you go back in the church of God, you go back in the assembly of God, you go back into the Baptist church. You go back into the Methodist church, most of those Protestant churches in their early beginnings would turn you out of the church if you went against the church teachings. And the reason they did that is because they knew that they'd be trouble in that church. You know, you let one buy with it, and you give them a position in your church, and they're not fully a, a, a abiding by the church teachings. You just let them slide. Well, we'll love them, and we'll be kind to them. We'll work with them for about a, you know, the next thing you know, Johnny comes in, and Sally comes in, and Susie comes in, and George comes in, and Bill comes in, and and, and Bobby Sue comes in. The next thing you know, you've got a bunch of people that's just taking a part in the church that's not abiding by. Then you've got a whole mess. Then you've got a church that's always got trouble. But I said this probably two years ago when I first came here. You can't have a church that don't have trouble all the time. You don't have to have trouble all the time. Huh? I heard a man stand up right here in this service. And ever since I've been coming here, been nothing but trouble. That don't have to be. I don't mean mean about that man, but I'm just saying it don't that don't have to be. Let's stand all over the house. Well, I hope I've said something that was provoke you to think and But you know, listen to me before we close. We are, we are living in a, uh, I heard a song the other day. I can't remember who it was by. I want to think it was Brian Free and Assurance, their new, one of their new songs. The second verse hit something about we be, we have become so center, center friendly that we have become dishonest. Can't remember the exact wording of it. But there has to be, a line drawn and the pastor who takes a stand and has to abide by that stand and you know it's one thing to preach holiness that's that's not hard any any preacher could preach holiness but it's when you take a stand for holiness and you that's the hard part But if you don't have that, if you don't have a pastor or a church, and you start tolerating, I'm not saying be unmerciful. You all know me more than that. I'm not saying not be kind. I'm not saying don't love. I'm not saying any of that. But what I am saying is when you start allowing somebody to influence other people in your church when they're doing wrong, and you don't say something about it, God's going to hold you accountable, me accountable. Amen. Let's come pray. Come on. Help us to do it right, Lord. I don't feel like I've brought this out as good as I should have, Lord. I tried. Help us to be a church that stands for the truth with love. Lord, help us not to be mean, spirited, but yet stand for the truth in love. Oh, God. They can disappear with one small wave when written in the sand. Oh, God, help For us. endured 10,000 years and sown, engraved by God's own hand. Words of the past. I don't have anybody on my heart. They can hurt I'm or they you, can I'm telling you, please, heal. please, I beg you. Can be touched, don't be, don't be church trouble. 
I don't know if nothing going on. I've not heard anything. I promise from the depths of my heart. But I felt like the Lord dealt with me today about this. The children's estate. My God. You might run off the preacher, but down the road, your children might run off too. You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. Father, help us to do it right. We only can do that with your wisdom that you gave us by your spirit. Oh, God. Lord, you spoke to this church at Silent Tower. They had charity. They had love. It was a good church. But there was a tolerant church for a woman prophet who taught false doctrine. Oh, God. Help us to reach out in love, Lord. But help us not tolerate sin. Oh, God. For endure 10,000 years and so Engraved by God's own hand. Come on, church, let's pray. Words of oh, the power is real. They can hurt or they can heal. Can be touched, but you can feel. Oh, yes, Lord. Words. Yes, Lord. Every strength in everyone. And when all is said and done. Wars are lost in battles and won with words. In a hundred different languages, they can be the thoughts of man. They can form a bond as strong as steel, or oh, break a golden band. They can disappear with one small wave when written in the sand, or endure ten thousand years in stone. Engraved by God's own hand. Words of oh, the power is real. They can hurt or they can heal. Can't be touched, but you can feel. Words, there is strength in everyone. And when all is said and done, wars are in battles won with words. Come on, sing it, Hope. Words. The Bible said there's life and death in the power words. of the tongue. Oh, the power is real. They can hurt or they can heal. Can be touched, but you can feel words. There is strength in it. Little Simpson, my children won't come to church. And when here. All is said my children don't want to come here. Words are lost in battles Why? won. Oh, God, help us. With words. Why? Help us, Lord. Oh, the power is real. The power they is real. Can hurt they can, can hurt, heal. They can heal. Can't be touched, but you can feel. 